In this video, I'm going to show you four quick and easy Gmail tips that will save you from doing hours of this so you can spend more time doing this. Hey guys, welcome to Adulting with Esther, the show where we talk about the things that you don't learn in school. I'm your host, Esther, and today we're gonna to be talking about four quick and easy Gmail tips that will allow you to clean out your inbox and take back your day. If you're getting value out of this video so far, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And if you're new here, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then the alarm that pops up after so you can get alerts when we share videos every Tuesday. The first thing we'll be talking about is how to change your view in Gmail from categories to inbox. The second thing we'll talk about is how you can clear out the clutter in your inbox by using Gmail's built-in features of the archive and delete, unsubscribing, and using filters and labels. The third thing we'll be talking about is how you can manage your email action items and to-do lists by using Google labels or Google tasks. And then the fourth thing we'll talk about is how you can increase your productivity in your email by using batch tasking. If you want to get maximum value out of this video and really take back control of your email inbox, go get something to write with and a piece of paper so that you can take notes at any point during the video. Feel free to check out the description down below. You can find timestamps where you can skip ahead to those main points we just talked about and all the links to the products I reference in this video for your convenience. The first thing we're going to do is change the view on our inbox from categories to the inbox view. The default setting for Gmail accounts is to have a primary, promotions and updates tab. What I've done is I go over here on the right to settings and I click the little wheel. Go down to settings. From this page, you're gonna wanna go from general labels to inbox. Go ahead and click inbox and you'll see inbox type. You wanna try to have the unread first option and scroll to the bottom and click save changes. This allows me to know what are the brand new emails that I've just received without them getting lost in all of the others. The second thing we need to do is clean out the clutter in our inbox. We're gonna be doing that by unsubscribing, archiving and deleting, and using the filters to set up. Let's go ahead and get started with unsubscribing. To unsubscribe from an email, simply select the email, and Gmail is smart enough to recognize where the unsubscribe link is at the bottom of the email. Simply click unsubscribe and press the blue button to confirm. Some emails, though, don't have that nifty unsubscribe button at the top. When that happens, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you need to look for the words that say unsubscribe from this list. Most times when you unsubscribe from an email, it'll take five to seven days for it to come off of the marketer's list. Sometimes marketers try and get a little shysty with you. If you don't see the word unsubscribe down below, look in the really fine text. Oftentimes they try and keep the colors the same so that people are more unlikely to find the button and unsubscribe. Don't give up, you can find it and it's worth your time, I promise. Let's talk about what the difference is between archiving and deleting. Deleting is your trash. And if you delete something, that's where it'll go. When you archive something in Gmail, what you're doing is you're still holding on to it. Think of the archive button as your file cabinet that you keep in your closet. Put it away and you forget about it. Now the magic's going to happen where we set up the filters in our Gmail. Organizing your Gmail with filters and labels should definitely be done after you go through and delete, archive, and unsubscribe from your emails. Filtering and labels is where you're actually going to hold on to the emails that you see as important. Here's how it works for me. At the end of the day, when I'm looking at 100 brand new emails, it's very easy to get overwhelmed on which ones I should delete and which ones I shouldn't. But now I'm left with a plethora of emails that still are disorganized. So what I do is I have Google organize them as soon as they hit my inbox. Now we're looking at the left-hand bar of Gmail. We can see inbox with two unread emails, as well as since scheduled, draft, and others. We can also see these colored labels that I've created with numbers next to them. These numbers to the right of them tell me how many unread emails there are within that label. And whenever I get time or I want to go back and look at, say, real estate emails, I know that I've got 13 new emails that I can check out quickly, delete, or archive when I'm done. Here are some emails from Southwest Airlines. I like to make sure that I look at them because often they have really great flight deals, but I don't need to see them every single day. So what I can do is I can click on any of these emails. So I'm actually going to highlight this email right here. Now you can highlight the entire email or you can highlight just the domain. 
Just like at most businesses, the first part before the at sign is often someone's name, and then the part after the at sign is the domain that pertains to just that business. If you only select the end portion of that email when you create these filters, you're guaranteed to get every email from that company, assuming they're using the same domain, instead of just the emails from Kathy. And I'm going to click the show search options up here in the Gmail toolbar. Where it says from is where I'm going to paste that portion that I copied. See that button down here that says create filter? I'm going to click skip the inbox. This makes it so I will never see it in my unread inbox ever. It will go straight to this folder. What I am going to click is apply the label and click choose label. You can either choose a label you already have or create a new one. Call it airlines. I create it and now it's there. The last thing I'm going to do is at the very bottom click also apply filter to matching conversations. What that means is any email that has this ending domain is going to be put into this folder. And now I create filter. And now we can see over on the left that the airline's label has been made. If I wanna add a color to it, I can click label color. I can see that every single Southwest email that I have has now been moved to this section. And when I go to my email in the everything else category, there are no longer any emails in here from Southwest Airlines that have that same domain. I do see one here from Southwest Airlines that is different because it's an itinerary. I'm going to follow that same procedure of highlighting everything from the at sign to the end, click the arrow down, paste it in the from, and create filter. I am skipping the inbox, applying the label, only now I choose the label that's already there. I am not creating a new one because I've already done that. I apply the filter to one mass matching conversation and it is now created. We can go into the airline and we can see again that everything is in there. And when we go to the inbox, no longer are there any Southwest emails in my everything else. So now you need to go through and do this with every email that you have in your inbox. And yeah, it is a total pain. But luckily, doing the work now is going to save you hours and hours of doing the work later. And hey, if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and hit the like button down below. Let's talk about step three, how you can manage your email with those action and to-do items that you have in there without using your inbox as kind of a hub. There's two ways we're gonna talk about to do this. One is applying a separate label. And the second way is you can create a Google task lists. Let's talk about the Google Tasks first. When you have an email that you need to do something with or take action on, there's a great way to keep track of it by using Google Tasks. Up here where it says add to tasks, you see a plus and a check mark. Google Tasks is a wonderful feature that's available here on the right. It's the blue mark with the pen and the yellow dot. When you click it, it'll open up a whole sidebar that is available through any Google Suite option, such as Google Docs, Google Sheets, you can create any list that you want up here at the top. I've created a new list for today called list. I'm going back to that original email that I need to take action on, and I'm going to press add to task. Now this email has been added over here. In fact, it's even hyperlinked now. So when I get to it, I can click on this and it'll take me directly to that email at a later date when I know I have time to take that action. Another way for you to identify action items in your Gmail is by using more labels. If I don't wanna use the Google Tasks, over on the right side of the page, I can also identify this as an action item by using labels. What I'm going to do here is click labels and label as. Currently it's labeled as an update, click create new. I'm going to label this one action items. Create, and now action items are available and because I just created it within this window, it's now available under action items. The fourth and last thing we're going to talk about is how you can use batch tasking to help you save time within your email. A lot of the productivity ideas that I have about email have come from this book written by Angela Watson. It's called Fewer Things Better. If you'd like to know my take on it and hear more about it, go ahead and click the book summary card up in the corner. What Angela Watson talks about in here is how you can be the one to control your email instead of letting your email control you. And you can do that by setting a strict schedule. That means the first thing you need to do is turn off your notifications to your email. Once you've turned off the notifications to your email, you're in control. You will no longer know when someone emails you or they don't, and that's a great thing. Now, if you do have a really important email coming in, there are ways for you to set alerts to your phone so you know when you get a response from that one particular person. I don't know about you, but in the business world that I work in, it's acceptable to wait up to 48 hours to respond to an email. When I'm batch tasking my email, it's really important that I set aside action times for my emails 
at a designated time and I'm able to stick to that every single day. When I come home from work is when I check my personal email. When I'm at work, during my lunch is when I check my work email. And I only check it at those times. If email isn't a super integral part of your operation, you might even be able to only take action on your email every two days. Now taking action on my email is different from looking at my email. When I batch task my email, I allow myself to check my personal email and my business email two times per day. During the work day, the first time I check my email is to sort. There are some emails that come through that are quick FYI emails from my boss or my colleagues that I just need to know before the workday starts. That allows me to know about any issues that might be coming that day that I can respond to with a quick thank you for letting me know. Emails that require more work or thinking are the emails that I whoop, send to my Google task. Checking in with my email every day, twice a day, allows me to stay focused on my email and it keeps me from becoming overwhelmed. The best part of all of this is the freedom of being released from the endless email notifications. I now know that I have a designated time every day to take care of my email and I'll worry about it then. Which means when I am on my computer, my email is put away and I don't worry about it. I'm able to increase my productivity and my effectiveness and my workflow in all things personal and business because I know I have a designated time later in the day to take care of that stuff that I dread so much. Whew, that was a lot. That was a lot. If you made it all the way through this and you got some value out of it, go ahead and hit that like button and let us know we're doing good over here. You can also hit subscribe down below so that you're alerted when we make new videos. Let's do a quick recap of everything we learned today. We started out by changing our view in Gmail from the default mode to the unread mode. The second thing we did was we cleaned out the clutter by unsubscribing, archiving, deleting, and then adding filters and labels. The third thing we did was we talked about how you could manage your action items in your email by using a label to mark as an action item or using the built-in Google Tasks feature. And then the last thing we did was we talked about how you can batch task your email work at a time that's more efficient for you to allow you to increase your productivity throughout the day.